Hello, welcome to this week's podcast. So tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about some ways you can boost your, you know, boost your immunity through a kind of healthy living, living. So, you know, obviously with the COVID pandemic going on, lots of people are really interested in what, what can they do to help their immune system? Are there things we can do uh, related to our diet and how we live that can affect our immune system? For the positive, we all are pretty aware of things we can do or behaviors that are negative for our immune system, but let's talk about some of the positive things we can do uh, that can really have a, a positive impact on how your immune system functions. You know, the first thing that uh, can really help boost your immune system is really getting enough sleep. Now, I know I've kind of preached that before, but the more and more we learn about sleep, the more we learn how important it is. And Unfortunately, in today's world, you know, kind of sleep deprivation is kind of worn as a badge of honor. You know, you hear people say all the time that, you know, I function on four hours of sleep. And the unfortunate thing is that that's, that's going to be problematic uh, for those individuals because we're learning how important sleep is in, in kind of a variety of things related to your health. But one of those big areas is, is how it affects your immune system. So sleep is essential. Uh, for your your immune system and when I talk about sleep I'm talking about high quality sleep and so obviously if you have to take medications or things like that we're learning that those are more kind of sedatives and they don't really enter that kind of that deep sleep that's the sleep we need so natural sleep is really really important so some things you know you need to consider is first of all am I getting enough sleep so if you're an adult typically an adult you should try to get at least seven hours of sleep obviously as you uh, uh, go to different age groups the younger they are the more sleep that they need so you know infants need up to 14 hours of sleep but generally speaking an adult needs at least seven hours of sleep a night and so you should really strive to to get that well there are some things you can do uh, to help that and we call that sleep hygiene so it's kind of related to habits and routines and kind of the environment you're sleeping in so a couple tips to help improve your sleep hygiene well the first one is to limit screen time. We're learning more and more that, that kind of the, the blue light that's emitted from the technology, your TV, your phone, your computer, uh, that, that blue light wavelength really interferes with your circadian rhythm. So if you can really basically try to stop uh, using those electronic devices at least an hour before your bedtime, that's going to help you. The next thing that's going to help is if you have a regular sleep schedule. You know, a lot of times people think I'll catch up on the weekend and it really doesn't work that way. You need to really go to bed, kind of create a habit of, of going to bed and getting up at the same time every night. That's going to kind of let your body understand that this is a time I sleep. Another thing that's going to help you is, is moderate exercise. And I don't mean right before going to bed, but, but it's been uh, found that if you do some daily moderate exercise, it actually improves your sleep. Then other things you can do is like a sleep mask or a dark room, kind of controlling the environment. And then obviously um, uh, limited noise, things like that. Uh, interestingly, a, a, a cool room has been found to be very beneficial to helping you sleep. So, uh, you know, cooling off your, your bedroom at night uh, has been found to improve your sleep. So that's kind of it about sleep that we'll talk about right now. Another thing you can do to really help improve your immune system is eat more healthy fat, fats. Uh, you know, this, the normal response of the body to illness or infections is an inflammatory response. And so that mild inflammatory response is, is good and actually beneficial to help the body uh, beat a different type of pathogens. But the problem is, is we're kind of living in a world now where we just kind of have chronic inflammation. And this is bad. We're learning that chronic inflammation is kind of the root of numerous illnesses. So uh, we need to really figure out how we can prevent the chronic inflammation. Well, the, the good news is that there's, there's lots of studies that are now showing that healthy fats that really help provide your body with the essential fatty acids that needed to boost your immune system. And these will improve your, your immunity and basically it reduces this un un unfavorable inflammation. So uh, certain healthy fats um, uh, can really help you fight uh, the inflammation product of, of kind of chronic illness. So some of the foods rich in these beneficial fatty acids, you know, salmon, olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds. And, and these are really high anti-inflammatories. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, if we reduce that 
chronic inflammation, it helps improve your immune system, but also helps uh, lower the risk of all these other chronic diseases such as hypertension, heart disease, diabetes. And so, you know, the healthy fats are something you really should try to incorporate in your diet. Next thing that can help your immune system is eating fermented foods or taking a probiotic supplement. You know, so uh, we're, we're learning that there's good bacteria, there's kind of this community uh, within your gut, uh, and, and hopefully it's composed of good bacteria. And those uh, communities kind of called a, uh, a probiotic. And basically, having a population of these, these probiotics may help boost your immunity, inhibits the growth of harmful bacteria in your gut. And there's evidence that some probiotics promote the production of natural antibodies in your body. So, you know, we want to kind of maintain this gut health by doing things we can do to really promote the, the development of the good bacteria. And that can be found in fermented foods. So it's like yogurt, kimchi, sauerkraut. These are things rich in probiotics and they help really kind of keep your digestive system healthy. Now, obviously these are things that often you hear people, I uh, wouldn't say they're the most palatable things and, and you don't hear a lot of people uh, raving about the taste of these things. So uh, there's some things you can do and that's where kind of the, the probiotic supplements can come in. But the important thing is you're really trying to promote uh, kind of a good thriving population of back, the gut bacteria. And this can really help improve your, your immune system. Um, there's been studies on this related to uh, taking probiotic supplements. And it's really found that, that good gut health or, or the good colony of the bacteria in your gut really has a, a, a positive impact on your immune system. Now, the opposite is the reverse too, is if you don't have a healthy gut, then you are really, you're, they're jeopardizing your immune system. And the more and more we learn about the kind of the, the gut and how it works is we're learning much, much more about how it has impact. There's just not a, a tube that's passing waste product through us, uh, but it actually has a lot of functions. Uh, but one of those functions is helping your immune system. So good gut health is essential for your um, uh, immunity and, and, and promoting good healthy uh, uh, ability to fight infections and things like that. Another thing you can do to improve, boost your immunity is increase your consumption of whole plant foods. And, you know, so every day, you know, our body in, in normal kind of metabolism, where we're exposed to both free radicals and we also form uh, these free radicals that are just kind of a byproduct of metabolism. So you can have kind of this formation or accumulation of or unfavorable inflammatory processes that result in these, these free radicals. And I already said that the inflammation chronically is a bad thing. So, uh, you know, like the heart disease, Alzheimer's, certain cancers, all these things are are being stimulated or driven by chronic inflammation. And so uh, whole plants, they're rich in nutrients and antioxidants. These antioxidants, they're going to help decrease this inflammation by fighting these free radicals. And ultimately, it's going to improve your body's ability to fight against harmful pathogens. So the, the whole plant foods, great antioxidants. So really encourage you to eat them. Also whole plants, they contain fiber, which also nourishes that kind of that gut uh, probiotics that I already talked about. So it improves gut health. And then also, you know, fruits and vegetables that are rich in nutrients, including vitamin C. And these may also reduce the severity and duration of, of cold, the cold or the flu. So, you know, examples of uh, fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Seeds are all uh, good things to be eating for these, these reasons. The next thing you can do is really limit your consumption of refined sugars. So we're learning, you know, more and more every day about refined sugars. And what those mean is, is kind of the, the artificial carbohydrates or not natural, highly processed sugars. And what we're learning is, you know, obviously there's a debate, but a belief that this is contributing to the obesity epidemic. But another problem is, is, is as you increase these things, uh, then it also weakens your immune system. So again, it's related to inflammation. So as you're consuming these highly refined products, which are sugars, it's going to actually cause an inflammatory response. 
And it actually then, again, like we've already talked about inflammation and how it impacts your immunity. Uh, and this is a bad thing, obviously. So again, I'm not saying sugars that are found in fresh fruits and things like that, but I'm talking about refined sugars. And, and so, you know, there's all these health consequences related to this, diabetes, things like that. But but really, there's a big a risk to your immune system, too. So the important thing is to really limit your sugar intake. You know, try to, you know, uh, limit to less than 5% of your daily calories. And so, you know, for example, if you're a 2,000-calorie-a-day diet, that really means, you know, a total of two tablespoons of sugar per day. So really, you know, we probably get too much sugar in our diet, and that's something we need to pay more attention to. Another thing we can do to help really uh, improve our immune system is regular exercise. So I already talked a little bit about exercise's impact on sleep and how that's going to help your immune system. But exercise itself directly uh, helps your immune system. Now, the important thing to note here is moderate exercise. You know, uh, if you're someone that is at risk of overtraining, there is a point that exercise becomes detrimental to your health. And so overtraining can actually be kind of a negative consequence on your your immune system and as well as a lot of other problems but the reality is is we we really want regular moderate exercise and and what i mean by that is basically you know the general recommendations are about 115 minutes of moderate exercise per week but the important thing is to understand that there are several studies that are showing that moderate exercise does improve the effectiveness of vaccines it improves the, the uh, immune response. And it's really important to understand that uh, moderate exercise may actually reduce inflammation. Uh, but again, uh, uh, if you over-exercise or, or, or overdo it, then that actually kind of shifts that pendulum the other way. So you want exercise, you want moderate exercise in your routine, uh, but it's important really to remember that you don't want to overdo it either. So that kind of the 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week is, is essential. Another thing you can do to uh, help it boost your immune system is find ways to reduce your stress levels. What's important is, is we're learning that stress, while there's this huge emotional component of it, there is also a physiologic component. And one of the things that stress does is really, again, it promotes that inflammation response and again, that suppresses your immune system and obviously has a lot of other uh, negative consequences, but it directly impacts your immune system. So how you manage stress, you're not gonna avoid stress. You have to really learn how to manage stress. Uh, and that's what the key here is, is reality it is the world we live in, you're not gonna avoid it. So then it becomes, how do you manage it? Well, some of the things you can do is, again, regular exercise is very helpful for stress management. There's meditation or mindfulness, journaling, yoga, those types of things. Then obviously, uh, if you're if you're really having difficulty managing your stress, you may want to seek the help of a, a licensed therapist or counselor to, to help you. Because it's real important that you manage your stress. Another thing that can help uh, boost your immune system is some some supplements. So I want to talk a little bit about that. There are some supplements. This has really kind of got a lot of media. Uh, with COVID, because uh, there's been lots of different things that uh, have been advocated or, or created some confusion on, on its impact on the immune system. So I want to talk to you about supplements related to strengthening your body's general immunity. This isn't specific to COVID. Um, it's really, is there things you can do to help improve your immune system as a whole? And yes, there are. Uh, some of those things are like vitamin C. Uh, this is very helpful. Uh, in, in helping us kind of fight the, the, the common cold. Again, you, you know, this, it doesn't prevent it, but it helps kind of re reduce the duration of, of the illness. Another uh, supplement is vitamin D. Uh, obviously your level of vitamin D can be very seasonal depending on, on where you live and how much sun exposure you get. Ideally, the best uh, form of vitamin D is through the sun exposure. Uh, but if you live in a climate or if it's winter and you are unable to really get adequate uh, light exposure, then, then a vitamin D supplement uh, may be beneficial in helping you uh, in boost your immunity. Another uh, supplement is zinc. Uh, zinc is uh, really one of those things that we're learning, learning more and more about. That it does actually 
uh, probably show some benefit in reducing uh, uh, the cold. Uh, how that impacts other illnesses is unknown, uh, but zinc supplement is one of those things that may have a, a, a positive effect on your immune system. Interesting, uh, another supplement is garlic. Uh, garlic's been actually been found to really help kind of reduce the common cold incident by about 30%. Uh, but obviously there needs to be more research on this. So when we're talking about these supplements, the challenge is, is finding uh, good uh, uh, scientific data uh, that really kind of helps decide if it works or not. A lot of the information related to supplements is kind of anecdotal. Um, so it's really difficult to make a determination on, on is a supplement or helpful or, or not helpful. But, you know, in general, the ones I've mentioned, there is a fair amount of evidence to show that it does help uh, boost your immune system. So again, all these supplements can be found in, in whole food, plant-based foods. Um, and, and so that's the best way to get these type of uh, supplements in your body. But obviously if you're unable to do that, then yes, there's, there's commercially available supplements. Another thing that can really help boost your immune system is staying well hydrated. Uh, one of the challenges is, is, you know, in today's world, we're busy and doing things and it can be really difficult to stay hydrated. Uh, not all, only are we distracted by kind of uh, doing a bunch of stuff, but often we're not drinking water, we're finding something else to drink. And the important thing to understand is you want to be optimally hydrated because that's going to help simply consider, you know, moving nutrients around in the body to the areas that need it. That's been dependent on the blood, which is a volume. And, and so you want to stay out of the hydrated so that those, those highways are open for the nutrients to flow. For the same, but kind of the opposite direction, getting bad things out of the body is also driven kind of through that way. So hydration is very important to make sure your kidneys are, are working well and the highways are able to move those kind of those uh, toxic things uh, from one area to the other so they can be removed from the, the body. So that's important for your lymphatic system also. That's lymphatic system is essential for your immune system and that's really a fluid dependent uh, uh, system. So it's gotta be, you have to be well hydrated so that that is functioning to its maximum. So the lymphatic system is really uh, kind of the, the super highway of your immune system. That's where a lot of things happen in your immunity. And so you wanna make sure that you're well hydrated so that system is, is working uh, really to the best that, of its ability. So uh, hydration, like I said, is real important. Now you get asked all the time, you know, how much, how much water should I drink? And, and that's really, you know, uh, there's formulas and things like that that you can use, but the important thing is, is you really just want your urine to be pale yellow. Um, now, younger people, I tell them, you know, drink when you're thirsty and don't drink when you're not thirsty. But as we get older, we kind of lose that drive of thirst. So we actually have to be more con conscious of, of drinking. So, you know, really consider, you know, how much you're urinating and what is the color of your urine. You want it just a, you know, a pale yellow, not a dark yellow. Um, it is kind of an indi good indication of how well you're drinking water. Another thing, obviously, that can help uh, boost your immune system is getting vaccinated. This isn't specifically related to the COVID vaccine. Uh, there's more than 20 life threatening diseases that have, uh, we have vaccines for. Um, and really, a vaccine, all it does is kind of stimulate the immune system to get prepared so if it is exposed to whatever that that pathogen is that the body already has an army ready to go to fight the infection. So, you know, it's important that, that uh, vaccinations are, are known to help and work. So, you know, maintaining or being current on your vaccinations will really help prevent or decrease any illness in the future for yourself. So these are just some, some things you can do kind of in the world we're living in right now, there's a lot of interest in, in kind of boosting your immune system naturally. And here's some things you can do. 
uh, yourself. You don't need prescriptions for this. You don't need a doctor to tell you to do it. Uh, it's things you can take ownership and do and, and work to, to improve your immune system. So again, if there's any other health or wellness things you think we could maybe help you with, just let us know. Remember, you're on your, your health journey, and I just really want you to remember that you got it. So thank you.